Hi, this is Shambhavi. Welcome to my weekly podcast about spirituality, love, death, devotion, and waking up while living in a messy world. The Satsang with Shambhavi podcast is recorded live each week with students of our nonprofit community, Jayakula. For more information and to find out about attending a satsang, visit jayakula.org. Thanks for listening. Much love to you, wherever and however you are. Hey, Shambhavi. Yeah. Can you talk about how one works with chronic pain as a part of practice? Mm -hmm. Sure. Great question. So, chronic pain. Yes. Here's Ma's advice about when you have illness. Find the very best doctor you can afford. Find the very best, most accomplished doctors you can afford. And do your best to work with the illness. And if that doesn't help or it doesn't cure you, then understand that this is just part of what is going to be in your life and you'll learn to work with it in other ways. But her first advice was go to the doctor. Go to the very best doctor you can find. Get professional help. So she was very practical, which I love. And then I'll add some advice to that. Never only go to Western doctors. <laughs> There's some things for which we need to go to Western doctors, but it should always be in complementarity with someone who can give you actual dietary advice and perhaps herbs and other kinds of treatments because Western medicine really doesn't know very much about chronic illness and how to work with it. In general, Chinese uh, doctors and Ayurvedic doctors and Taoist doctors and pretty much any kind of doctor besides a Western doctor is going to have much more effective treatments for chronic illness. We also know that Western medicine has just gone down some sort of really weird rabbit hole of horrible medicines that are worse than the, what they're supposed to cure. You know, they create side effects that are just unimaginable. So... Don't do that. Don't take anything that's not safe. You know, if you're someone who likes to go to Western doctors or you have to go to Western doctors for whatever is, ha is happening, always package that with some other treatments that are more naturopathic because they'll be more effective in the long run. Then I would say don't indulge in magical thinking. So don't tell yourself that if you just had the right attitude or you did the right mantra or took the right supplement that you'd be all better. When we have chronic illness, it's a lot of work. It takes a lot. I mean, I've had chronic illness almost my whole life. It becomes one of our teachers. And teacher in how to take care of ourselves, teacher in losing fantasies about ourselves, losing fantasies about various things, becoming more sober and clear-eyed, becoming more resigned to just life as it is. That doesn't mean fatalistic giving up because we shouldn't give up trying to take care of our bodies ever. But we don't want to give up before we've actually tried. And I feel like most of the failures of trying are really failures of the imagination. You know, people have some concepts that keep them locked into a certain very limited range of solutions they're willing to try and then we really shortchange ourselves you know I've had people tell me who have chronic illness well I've tried everything I say well what have you tried well you know they just tried whatever their doctor in their health insurance plan told them to do and they thought that was it that those were all their options I mean we actually have a whole range of different large domains of options you know, we have Western medicine, we have all the naturopathic, traditional medicines, we have shamans, we have spiritual practice, but most people can't rely on spiritual practice because you're not committed enough to it to have enough, enough accomplishment to have that be effective. So we're basically, you know, Western medicine, naturopathic traditions, and shamanism. I, I've used all three of those. 
And I recommend that anybody with chronic pain should, I mean, chronic pain's very hard to live with, very hard to live with. And if you want to be a practitioner, it's very, very difficult to do that when you have chronic pain, when you can't sit and when you're constantly being distracted by pain. So I think, it's, you know, if you want to have a happy life, and especially if you want to practice and be able to actually sit and do practice for good amounts of time, really put all your energy and whatever money you have into getting and experimenting and trying to get treatment from experts, from experts, not, you know, there's a lot of advice out there. There's a lot of advice out there. And we have to be very discerning. I just went to see someone a couple days ago, has a lot of training, but also obviously had fallen prey to all kinds of pop medicine that you read in various articles and had lots of things to say that simply weren't true and was saying them with great authority. <laughs> so, you know, it really, it's not easy. It's not easy to be sick chronically and have chronic pain, and it's not easy to navigate through all the different options. It's just not. But you will learn a lot on that journey, right? I think most of all what, what is resonating is just the patience it takes to try so many different things. And I find it really hard to be discerning about the kinds of practitioners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it so, is hard. I mean, I've just ended up in situations where I've tried what they've recommended and, and then later concluded maybe that wasn't the right thing for me. But mm -hmm. I think that happens to all of us yeah. with chronic illness, for sure. That reminds me that one of the most important things is love. It is important to feel loved by whoever is treating you. Now, that is not going to happen with Western medicine most of the time. I mean, it's not like they're not going to be kind sometimes, but mostly they're just going to be harried and overworked and not really have enough time for you, and you're not going to feel really cared for. But love is medicine. When you're around a real healer who really just loves people, you will get better faster, for sure. Absolutely for sure. So if you go to someone who practices Ayurveda or Chinese medicine, those are my two go-tos and then occasional shamanism. You know, if you don't feel like the practitioner actually cares about you, don't stick around. It doesn't matter what their pedigree is. That won't be as healing for you. There's lots of people in our community that have experience with this. Yeah, I was going to talk about my experience too. Great. My chronic things that I have going on for me, I guess. I mean, it's more like emotional and mental pain, but I also have physical pain too sometimes. And yeah, it's definitely been like a really long journey of like limited options too, you know, of um, trying to find people like you're talking about in that way where you really do feel like cared for and like there is some sort of flow of energetic connection that feels healing it does happen sometimes eventually it's like in small little steps and dose and I'm just like feeling kind of a lot of those things kind of adding up right now like all those little moves that I've made and um, just feeling grateful for having help and that's wonderful it often, with, these, with chronic illness, it often takes a long time to actually figure out what the origin point is for the illness, like what is actually causing the cascade of symptoms. And I had a major digestive illness when I was in my mid-20s to early 40s, which I got completely rid of. Um, you know, according to Western medicine, it's incurable. I had Crohn's disease. And that's supposed to be incurable, but I actually completely got rid of it, and it never came back. And then I had a 10-year break, and then I started having other digestive symptoms, which had various diagnoses along the way. But I think that it was, it's only the last couple of weeks that I actually figured out what's actually wrong. I am now taking herbs, and I just feel like, okay, this is like the first thing that is, feels like it's really working. Maybe most of you don't really feel this, but I'm just saying it because it's a possibility. From the perspective of the teachings I've received in Ayurveda, 
and from various other sources, the wisdom that comes out of things not being cured is equanimity with how things are. That's where we want to be headed. And having an understanding that the cure isn't always the cure, that we have illnesses because things are being worked with. And sometimes we unwind that and a cure happens, and sometimes we don't, and that's the cure. I mean, that's the cure for something. And even as I was taught by my Ayurveda teachers that sometimes death is the cure. You know, sometimes death is what unwinds things. And also maybe it's multi-lifetime. I had this treatment a couple days ago. This was like a distance Taoist energy qigong treatment. And I just had this really clear perception that this is ancestral. I had been told that before, uh, that I came in with, with this possibility for this kind of illness and not being able to get all the nutrients out of my food properly. So, you know, things are being worked through. And what that means is that if it's ancestral, then in this lifetime when we have teachings and teacher and practices, we have more possibility to unwind these karmas. So we actually help our ancestors in Maha time by working on these things, you know, by working with them. But developing equanimity, I just feel like whatever happens is what Ma is giving me. And I know that not all of you have that attitude, but that is really my deep conviction. And so even when I'm upset with not feeling well, I just, this is what Ma gave me, and I just need to do my best with it, even though I know I'm not going to be perfect at it either. Digestive stuff, your diet is really paramount in certain ways, and... I don't have a bad diet. It's just like the numbers of years that I've had digestive problems. I would have to be a saint. So that kind of like, you know, it gets my bratty side up that I would have to be so controlling of my diet. Anyway, but equanimity, because this is what God has served us. Equanimity, not fatalism. So we have to do our part to try to heal But if it doesn't work or it's not completely successful, the more kind of spiritual attitude towards it is just work with it as it is and recognize it as just how things are and move move along, even if you die. One thing I've really learned in watching you uh, navigate your illness and illnesses and and also my own is that there is always help and... Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't know that before having a chronic illness, and uh, there just is always help. Maybe not a cure, but, a, but, but always something that either relieves it or helps you feel less alone or, or just more optimistic, you know, more aware that, that we are being helped in all ways all the time. Yeah. I mean, number one is make an alliance with your body. Don't treat your body like an enemy. When I was in graduate school at Stanford, I got a really bad um, outbreak, I don't know what the right word is, of Crohn's, and I was bleeding internally, and it was really bad. And I went to the student health service, you know, Stanford Medical Center, supposed to be the best, and they sent me to the head of gastroenterology, And she had had someone in her family who had Crohn's, and that's why she ended up doing what she did. She was so angry at the disease. And when I told her that up until that point, actually, I hadn't had such severe symptoms. I think it was like, you know, I was in the middle of studying for my oral exams, and I was like a complete wreck. So I think that really like kicked up the inflammation in my body. But... Up until that point, I had only used Chinese herbs and acupuncture, and I'd used them really successfully. Like, I'd had multi-year remissions and things like that. And when I told her that, she said, that's impossible. Those things don't work. So first of all, she completely denied my experience. Then she said, when she saw me sort of like recoiling, (laughs) because I had not been in a Western medical office like that in decades, She said, when you get this disease, you have to hit it. You have to hit it hard. Like that. (laughs) 
Like, she hated it. She hated it. She went out of the room for something, and I just stood up. I went out in the hallway. I was. I started sobbing. I was just sobbing because the whole environment was so lacking in any healing quality. And some woman came out from behind the reception desk and said, what's wrong? And I said, I just can't deal with that doctor. And the woman said, yeah, she can be a little rough. <laughs> it's like, oh, great. And then I just never went back. I never went back. And I found a guy, who, he was like an internist who did acupuncture, and he had a spiritual practice only in Berkeley. <laughs> and he, you know, he was a devotee of Guru Mai Muktananda. And he basically put me back in remission from that, which was great. I don't know why, but just, you know, you have to have love. You can't heal in an environment where you hate your own disease or you hate your own body or you hate God for giving you the disease or the doctor hates it. You just can't really heal in that environment. So the first thing is you have to make an alliance with yourself, right? Make an alliance with yourself. Be friends with yourself and be friends with the disease too. You have to find alliances. You have to have people around to help you, and you have to have real alliances with healers and medical professionals. Many, many layers of alliance to get care. And one of the things, I think I was saying to one of you guys, although I've been sick so much in my life, I've had the best doctors, the very, very, very best, and... I'm so grateful for the healers that I've met, you know? Not, none of the Western doctors, but I mean like healer, 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 healers. I've just met magical people who were tuned into very profound things, and it's wonderful to know that those people exist. I really appreciate what you just said, Shamavi, about making friends with your body, and my thing has is, is been, well, about 10 years of insomnia, and I have this part of me is still just terrified of having it be as bad as it was. So all of a sudden I realized I'm afraid of sleep. I'm afraid of my body, of not knowing how to sleep. And so when you said like making friends with your body, and I thought, well, yeah, I'm making friends with sleep, which I've done on and off over, because this is kind of also a lifelong thing. It just got worse. But yeah, I feel like that's a possibility to, to try to do that. So I really appreciate that you said that. And, and also, one of the things I appreciate about having been in the foundations and what I'm learning with the practices is they are so subtle. So rather than me thinking that there's this thing I'm going to do that's going to make all the difference, it's more like I can use little tiny things to make little tiny shifts in energy that just, that just relax something or just you know, shift something, rather than thinking, like, I have to find the thing that's going to work, you know? And so all those kind of changes in the way I'm thinking are part of what gives me some sense that maybe I can be doing something different and doing it in a different way this time. And so, yeah, thank you for that. It's not really a question. It's just thank you for that comment about making friends with. Yeah. There's a couple of apps for your phone that are like for forming new habits. And I think there's one called Do One Thing. I don't know if it's still around, but it used to be around. But anyway, you just change one thing. Pick one thing. And just do that thing until it's it gets its own momentum and it just keeps going. Whether that takes two weeks or two months or a year, change one thing. And if you, if you like keeping records of things, you can get a little app to do one thing. And then when you feel that one thing has become the new you, choose one more thing. It's the power of small. Just do it one nibble at a time. Pick one thing. Be modest. Be patient with one thing. If we don't treat our bodies well, we will reap fruit from that. Nobody gets away with not eating properly for a whole lifetime. There will be effects. You will experience them. Just like if you did one thing better for years on end, you would experience the fruits of that too. So don't put objections in the road. Oh, you know, I don't like to do things. I have to do big things. Don't say anything about it. Just pick a thing and do it. 